And welcome to It's Just That Simple. I'm Bill DeFoy. Joining me is my lovely co-host, Michelle Wilson. Michelle, always a delight to have you in here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank this you. is a prime season for none other than identity theft. You are absolutely right. You know, um, we're around the corner for Black Friday, right? And um, it's just amazing how thieves love this time of year because, you know, as uh, people, we're all, you know, celebrating and having fun, yet they're out there trying to get information that doesn't belong to them and just create havoc on our lives, so yes. It does create a lot of havoc. You've been through the mill, I've been through the mill, and I'm sure many of our viewers have been through the mill, too, of having suf suffered the repercussions of being a victim of identity theft. Yes, I've been pretty busy the, actually the last few weeks and the stories that I've hear, that I've heard, you know, um, one story recently I was listening to um, the news actually, and they were talking about a woman who um, was in an accident and when she was uh, admitted to ER, her medical record said that her legs were amputated and she was trying to prove to the medical professionals there that she had legs. So it's just amazing how, um, you know, just your life can be turned upside down when someone gets a hold of your information. It can be turned upside down and it takes forever in a day to get it rected right side up again. Exactly, because how do you prove that that's not you, you know, especially when someone has all your in identifying information and that's what's really scary. I mean, they know everything about you from your name, your address, and especially medical records and your medical records has all your information. And so if that person was able to identify themselves as you, how are you supposed to identify yourself that that's not you? So kind of crazy. My experience, and I don't know about you, but my experience is I was guilty until I could prove myself innocent. Whereas the norm is you're supposed to be found not guilty until you can be proven otherwise. That's what's scary about identity theft, and you're so right. There was another story that I came across. His name was Carlos, and he was a UPS driver. And he found he was you know, sleeping and woke up, and the feds were in his room with guns drawn to his head. And he said that he was a, you know, part of a, um, a, a scam, and he went to jail for like two weeks. He was on house arrest for eight months, and then after that, the Fed said, you know what, we got the wrong person, it's not you. But his life was turned upside down. He lost his job, you know, probably, you know, lost his, his home, and, you know, it's just really crazy out there, and you just don't really think that that could happen to you. In something like that, where you have, in the case of Carlos, where he's falsely accused, and he then go after the feds for you know unlawful detainment. I think it's very difficult to um, to do that because you know hiring an attorney of course of course is going to cost money and so forth like that. And that's what's so unfortunate. Even with not just identity theft, but anything when you're falsely accused, you know, just it takes time, money to defend yourself, you know, and it's really hard to these days. Well, the stories out there are numerous, and they're scarier than watching Friday the 13th in a dark room and the lights are all out and you hear all of the strange noises. It's really a scary proposition. So that being said, what can people do to guard themselves against being a victim of identity theft? It's really difficult because like I said, we are what we call a database. Um, society now. Every, all our information are in databases, but during the holidays there are some things that you can do, especially if you're going to do some online shopping, um, when you receive emails. You know, you just want to be very careful. I know recently I've been getting a lot of emails saying that um, about something that I shipped or package received, you need to contact, and I'm thinking I didn't order anything, but you know, when you're going through your emails, sometimes you don't think about that, so you're going to click it on. But I have, I'm in a habit now when I don't recognize the email, I click it and I look in the, in the uh, subject, you know, the email address just to see. If it looks really funny, I just don't, you know, I won't click any, any links or anything like that. Um, because, you know, a, a credible company is going to have the name of the company.com. It's not going to be from a Gmail or a Yahoo or anything like that. So really look at that. But just be very careful when you receive email, especially from, you know, it looks like it might be from Best Buy, but it really isn't. When you see the Gmail, it has this long, weird thing. So just be very careful when you're ordering online. And uh, also when you're getting the pop-up windows, um, you may want to back out first and you actually go to the website. You key in the website itself. You know, those are kind of some of the online things that you can do. Well, it's very good about the idea of making sure that it's from 
you know, like bestbuy.com right. rather than, you know, da, 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 dot gmail or Yahoo because most companies, any reputable company, are going to have their own domain name and within that they're going to have a capability of sending email out to you using that domain name. Absolutely. And I've also noticed that even I could tell that uh, people that I know, my fam family and friends, I'll get an email and I'm very careful because it looks kind of, it looks like their name, right? And then you go in there and same thing, it, it's a weird uh, domain name and, you know, it's like, that's not my friend's email address. So nowadays, you know, like I said, Yahoo's been hawk, I mean, hacked and, you know, a lot of the, the carriers and so forth like that. So you just want to be very careful when you're opening up emails. Just verify before you click on a link. And sometimes in the case of Yahoo, we've discussed this before, Yahoo's, um, you know, uh, breach of security took place a couple of years ago, but they're just now finding out about it. Right. I mean, years and years of your information just being leaked out there, and you don't know where it's, you know, where it's been. And like I said, that's why it's so, you know, I'm talking about some tips and things like that as far as identity theft, but really now where the, the times are is just really being protected, just getting some coverage is, is you know, really the safest guard there is is just to protect yourself. Well, this time as well as any other time of year, but this particular time when we're in the midst of the holiday season, uh, there's a lot of scam artists out there willing to help you depart your hard-earned money. Absolutely. And even when you're shopping, you know, they have those scammers, you know, so if you're carrying your credit card, you may not want to carry all of your credit cards at one time because you actually don't even have to take your credit card out your wallet or your purse. Um, they can actually just walk by you and scan and get that information off your card, so. Yeah, it's, it's very, very easy. The technology is there. Now, a lot of banks are going to the chip cards. Yes, they are going through the chip cards. However, I recently had an issue with one of the chip cards. So, I mean, and the chip cards is, they're just coming around, but the other countries had it for years. So it's not really new technology. So I'm, I'm sure that, you know, if there's a way, they'll find out how to get around that and so forth. But yeah, there is the chip card, so it is more secure because each transaction has its own token. But um, I recently had an issue with even the, um, the chip card because if you're online, you're not using your chip card online. So someone has still purchased something online using my, my uh, debit card. Well, I know years ago, well, I'd say years ago, probably about four years ago, uh, I had a call from a particular bank. I won't mention the, the name of Chase, but I got a call from the bank, and they said, uh, where are you right now? You know, they identified themselves, and on, even on the caller ID, it said Chase Bank. And I said, well, I'm in California. Okay, don't use your, your debit card anymore today. It's frozen, period, locked down. Somebody back in New York, in Buffalo, New York, on that very day, tried to use my credit card in a drugstore. Wow, that's amazing. And like I said, with the credit cards, you know, they have a lot of the security protection now. You know, they're monitoring it all the time. So, you know, that is a little bit more secure than, you know, the other areas of identity theft. But, yeah, your banks and so forth. But still, it's something, like I said, you know, another tip is, you know, if you are doing a lot of shopping because we have our debit cards, right, that are attached to our, our checking accounts, you may want to use a separate account and not have much, you know, that much money in there. Because still, if you are shopping on a weekend and your bank's not open and you need access to cash, you know, and someone, you know, takes the money out of your account, so you, might, you may want to just set up another account just for, for shopping and not have it attached to your savings or, you know, your, your checking account where you have a lot of money in the, the account. So that's another tip that you could, could do. Well, with this particular transaction with Chase, I had actually gone physically into the bank before I went to work that day, and I went and I verified that indeed that somebody tried to use it. I mean, I was, yeah, I believed the person on the phone, but I wanted secondary confirmation. Well, if I'm going into a brick and mortar, I can physically see and talk to a bank representative, and they did confirm, and you know what, even on the spot, they issued me a temporary replacement card. That's great, and, and that's a great you know, tip, you know, just going into the actual um, company or structure, the brick and mortar, because even then, you don't know sometimes, like you said, somebody will call you, and even else, they may be uh, on Chase on the caller ID. I mean, there's ways that the, the um, identity thieves can actually, um, you know, convert or advert the um, 
caller IDs and so forth. So it's always good if you can't, you know, if you're getting an incoming call, it's always best for you to call that and say, hey, you know, especially if they're going to verify some information on the phone. You know, they didn't verify information that they're asking you, um, you know, your, your social or, you know, any type of verifying information. Like, you know what, I'll, I'll give you a call back. And then you call that 800 number that's on your card or so forth. Well, one of the things that I try to do each time is if I'm asked my social security number on the phone, don't do it. Nope. I give out the last four digits, and that's it. That's it, right. You know, and I think sometimes we are so, um, our lives are so busy that we don't think, you know, when someone asks us a question, we just think we can have to automatically answer. But yeah, just take a moment to think, hey, do they really need that information? Do they really need my social security? And now um, I know us as even a company, we're just asking for the last four. We're not even asking for the, you know, the full digits anymore because it's really it's for identification purposes only. And you know, you can use, there's other ways you can identify a person, but yeah, just give them the last four. Well, I remember way back in the Stone Age when Fred Flintstone roamed the face of the earth and I got my very first and only social security card it was printed right there in the front, not for identification purposes. And I'm going, okay, but as time has marched along, people use that more and more as an identifier when you're filling out paperwork for either a job application or a credit application, any number of things. They want that social. Right, I mean, I don't know what they can do now, you know, like I said, because we've over the years have used our social security to create those our you know credit profiles and so forth but like you said it doesn't really make sense that that's the only way that they can identify us is through our social security number well i know that in you know in another lifetime i had worked with a couple of different schools in their financial aid department and one of the things that they do require is the social of an individual the potential student to secure financial aid for them and there were a few over the course of time that were extremely reluctant to even depart from that, uh, that information. They didn't want to depart the information or impart that information to me or to anybody else. They said, that's mine. I said, well, you know, I'm sorry, but this is what they require. Otherwise, we can't. You know, there's some checks and balances that right. go in, so they can't verify who you are, and they can't verify income. So... If you want the financial aid, you've got to put down the number. If you don't, then don't put down the number. The and call's yours. And that creates, you know, like I said, verifying information now that all the companies or agencies are, are connected, you know, via um, internet or online and so forth. So you're right, if the information is not uh, matching up with the IRS where they're trying to pull down their, their information. So that's another thing. You're transferring, you know, companies, organizations, you know, even the government, they're transferring information back and forth and how secure are their systems. Like I said, Yahoo have had a, a leak, you know, for years and it's so complicated now. That's why I said it's just really just be very careful, um, as careful as you can be when you're giving out information. All right, so any last tips that you have for us? Well, really, you know, enjoy the, the holidays, but just be, you know, a little more aware of, you know, your surroundings and where you're um, shopping and so forth, especially when you're online, uh, especially with all, you know, everyone has a sale, everything sounds good, sounds like it's a good deal, but I would just take a moment and, like I said, you know, just double check before you hit submit or, or give your information, be careful of pop-ups and just really... Look at the information before you submit any information online. You know, I might offer this as a suggestion sure. because this is about what I'm going to do this year. I was given a gift uh, not all that long ago uh, thanks to uh, one of our local high schools, and it was a prepaid debit card. Yeah. And I'm going to be using that for some online purchases rather than my own. To me, that's a little bit more... Um, you know, uh, safety proof than it is if I were to use my regular debit or credit card. Absolutely, and I think you can get those cards up to like five hundred dollars. Those debit cards. Yes. That's a great idea that you can use those prepaid cards. You you load it on there, so it's a you know a set amount, and then hey, that's the way you can you know keep in your budget too if you're shopping. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm planning on doing. Is I got a set amount on this card. I know right. what it is. It's you know it's it's not a tremendous amount, but it will be sufficient for what I need to purchase for the holidays. So. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a whole other subject, but, you know, just shopping and so forth like that. We're so, we use our cards so much that, you know, just 
is you don't see money, you know, exchanging hands anymore. So yeah, I think that's a great idea to use the prepaid card. And again, you've got a set budget, you've got a set amount on that card. In this particular case, I can't add any more. Yes. So once that money's gone, it's done, it's over with, and you know, I can then toss it and not have to worry about somebody else going to, uh, you know, will it fall into the wrong hands? Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, those those prepaid cards, there is no information, your information is not on those cards. So it's really no, great. not at all. Yeah, not at all. So I think it's a great, great idea. To have yeah, I've got it registered with the company that issued the card, mm -hmm. but that way I can keep a balance or a total of the balance right. left on the card after I use it. That's awesome. So to me, that's a great suggestion. It's perhaps something worth considering. Absolutely. I'm going to have to start using that. It's a great idea. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I can think of some good things now and then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I would be very remiss, Michelle, if I didn't allow you to give out your um, contact information and have people be able to reach out if they have a particular question about uh, whether it be identity theft or some legal issues that you might need to have answered because I tell you, this is the gal that is the go-to person here. So give us your contact information. Okay, I would love to hear from you. My phone number is 805-304-5088 or you can reach me on the web. You can um, email me at Michelle, that's M-I-C-H-E-L-E, at Michelle Wilson International com. All right, Michelle Wilson, we'll see you next time right here on It's Just That Simple, a production of the Heritage Media Group. Mm -hmm.